after Mass this morning, I was talking with Deacon John and telling him what a difficult time I was having with today's homily. I'd been going in a couple of different directions and just after prayer just couldn't come up with anything. And he told me about a time at St. Nicholas Catholic Church in Gig Harbor. The priest homilies, the priest homily consisted of one word, and then he sat down. <laughs> and I thought, what a great idea. <laughs> so here it goes. Repent. I'm done. <laughs> well, uh, not quite. But I thought of another phrase. This is really great for the welcome committee. You brood of vipers. <laughs> well, repent. It's really important to finish the rest of that sentence from John the Baptist. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, repent means to turn around, which means and implies that you turn away from something and turn toward something else. Throughout the season of Advent, the church gives us the sacred scriptures, as we heard St. Paul tell us, that invite us to turn from the darkness of sin to the light of Jesus Christ. You see, light is a person. It's Jesus. And we are invited to repent and turn away from injustices against one another, to righteous actions towards those who are oppressed, downtrodden, pushed aside, and on the margins. Advent is a time of turning. Isaiah is a prophet and a poet. As a prophet, he is the spokesperson for God, speaking what God desires, not his own thoughts or ideas. In today's first reading, he prefigures in beautiful poetic images what Jesus will proclaim in his very person. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. Justice shall be the band around his waist and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then, then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, and together the young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play on the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. What a glorious vision. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then St. Paul writes to us in our second reading, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't you want your marriage, your family, 
your home environment, your workplace, to reflect these readings? If we do, then we need to repent. We need to turn each in our own way from pride, harsh judgments, impatience, hurtful words, unresolved resentments, impurity, sloth, selfishness, indifference, and the like. We all have things that trap us, enslave us, that we need to turn from so that we can turn toward Jesus. As you light your second Advent candle, pray once again these words from Isaiah, seeking to make them yours. There shall be no harm or ruin on my holy mountain, for the earth, for my home, for my marriage, for my children. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. My sisters and brothers, let us repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In John the Baptist's message is the purpose of Advent. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. At the end of this homily, I want to teach you a very daring prayer, a prayer that I believe will help each of us to do just this, to prepare for the coming of the Lord. But first, I'd like to talk about the season that we're in, Advent. In the season of Advent, a word itself which means coming, we reflect on the two comings of Christ, one in history and one in majesty, the one that's already happened when Jesus was born as a child, and then the one that will happen at the end of time, when the Lord will come again in glory. I joked during my homily last week that we could call it Advent Advent to help us to remember this. But what I just learned over this week is that we could actually call it Advent, Advent, Advent. <laughs> there are three comings of Jesus, and St. Bernard of Clairvaux mentions this third one in a way that helps us to recognize the love of God, that Jesus wants to come into our life every day. And St. Bernard says this is the way in power and in spirit, this third coming of Jesus. And Advent recognizes all of these comings of Jesus. So we're in the season of Advent, Advent, Advent. There's three comings of Jesus, but what's great is our duty is just one. To prepare the way of the Lord. To make room for God's coming. To make straight his paths. Now, how do we do that in just three weeks? Well, I hope the daring prayer that I'm going to teach you at the end of this homily is just one of those ways that can beautifully dispose ourselves to enabling the Lord to come to us. So how about the readings for today? Isaiah has this beautiful vision of the first coming of the Lord. This happened 800 years before Jesus was born. He has a vision of what seems like a zoo or a farm scene. There are literally lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. <laughs> Not to mention wolves, lambs, snakes, leopards, calves, cows, and oxen. Yet it's not as noisy as you would imagine. Actually, the whole scene of these animals goes against expectation because of who leads them. A child. There's a little child who brings peace against expectations. Isaiah prophesied through this that the salvation of the whole globe would lie in innocence, simplicity, and faith in Jesus, the Christ child. So how do we prepare for the celebration of Christmas, the coming of Jesus, both at the end of the time, his daily coming into our lives, and Christmas Day, especially when our lives are so busy, especially this season? 
This season is often marked by a time of noise, busyness, preparation. Many of you who may be students are just looking at your final exams coming around this semester. And your, your focus is, I'm just trying to get these exams done and just to stay on top of this. Or you may be preparing to travel for the holidays. Or you may be preparing to welcome others to your home. You may feel that, that busyness of life. So how are we to prepare? Well, John the Baptist really helps us to prepare for the way of the Lord, both with with his insistent message, but also his example. Where is John the Baptist in our reading today? He's in the desert. And what is the desert marked by? Silence. I'm reading a book called Letters from the Desert by Carlo Coretto, and he says this, I have come into the desert to pray, to learn to pray. It has been the Sahara's great gift to me, and I should like to share it with all my friends. It is immeasurable and contains every other gift within itself. It is the sine qua non of life, the treasure buried in the field the pearl of great price discovered in the market. Prayer is the sum of our relationship with God. We are what we pray. The degree of our faith is the degree of our prayer. The strength of our hope is the strength of our prayer. The warmth of our charity is the warmth of our prayer. No more, nor less. Prayer can happen in the desert because of silence. So what's, what's the prayer that I want to teach you to help you to prepare for the coming of the Lord in these three ways? Where we are familiar with prayerful aspirations, these really short, beautiful prayers. Jesus, I trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. These are short, prayerful sighs which pierce the sky and reach the ear of omnipotence oftener than a long set exercise of prayer. Yet how familiar are we with a short, dedicated moment of listening? Taking a serious second to bend our ear to the voice of the Lord, and to do this frequently. If a prayerful aspiration sounds like this, Jesus, I trust in you, A prayerful moment of listening sounds like this. And we can easily fill our days with these short, beautiful moments to make room for the Lord's voice. We welcomed the singer and songwriter Sarah Kroger to the parish this Friday, and she has a song titled, In the Silence. I want to read just two verses of this very prayerful song. In the silence of the heart you speak, and your mercy is the air I breathe. You come to me in whispers, and forgiveness sings. In the silence of the heart you speak, Lord, you speak. To the quiet of this room you come. I am captivated by this love. You light these darkened corners, and I am overcome. To the quiet of this room you come, Lord, you come. Why is silence the best way to prepare for Christmas? Because in Christmas, God breaks through the silence. He is the Word made flesh in the child Jesus. He's the one we heard in the first reading who strikes the land with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he slays the wicked. When we make room for him to speak, he does. And that is the very daring prayer that I'm offering you to practice this Advent season. Even throughout your busy days, to simply take a brief moment in silence and to recognize Jesus 
who loves you so much. And who wants to be ever more part of your daily life, especially in the busyness. And in a special way to prepare you for his coming at Christmas, at the end of time, and in the way you may not be expecting it throughout your everyday life. Allow him to speak his word of steadfastness and encouragement to give you hope. Make room for him through silence in the busyness of your life. What a simple way we can prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. A few of my most favorite words of the Mass are taken from John the Baptist, even though we didn't hear him say them uh, in the Gospel today. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. In silence, let us prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord this present Mass who comes to us in sacrament by his very presence in the form of bread.